Daryl Haggard is a world expert in observational studies of black holes, including Sagittarius A, the supermassive black hole in our Milky Way galaxy. She uses radio, submillimeter, infrared, and X-ray telescopes to probe exotic black hole environments where strong gravity plays a key role. She is also internationally known for her contributions to multi-messenger astrophysics, including the joint discovery of X-ray and gravitational wave emission from the first known collision of two neutron stars. Hi, I'm Daryl Haggard. I'm a professor of physics at McGill University and in the McGill Space Institute. I'm very excited to be here today to tell you about this amazing era of black hole discovery that we are entering as researchers. So I'm going to tell you about two different collaborations that I have the incredible privilege to work closely with or be a part of. Um, the first one is the Event Horizon Telescope. So this is a, just a phenomenal um, observatory that actually isn't just one single monolithic telescope. It's a whole bunch of network, a network of telescopes that are spread across the entire globe, across our whole Earth and use the basically the, the radius of our Earth, the diameter of our Earth, to make observations of supermassive black holes. So this is an incredible endeavor and a, a collaboration I am just thrilled to be a member of. And this collaboration has brought you this incredible image that many of you see, have seen. It's been plastered all over the popular liter literature um, and is just such a cool thing. It's the very first image of photons just outside the event horizon of a supermassive black hole. So we call this one M87. That's its slightly boring astronomer's phone number. It lives in a galaxy that's far, far away, but in fact, in astronomical terms, pretty close by. It's in the Virgo cluster of galaxies, and it is the brightest galaxy in that cluster, and it hosts this incredible supermassive black hole. So M87 is cool, but it turns out that this black hole has been so important um, as the first one we've been able to image the photons near the event horizon, that it also has a beautiful name given to it by the Native Hawaiian community, by our Native Hawaiian uh, astronomers and our community there who've worked so closely with many of our observatories. And that name is Poehi, which means the generative darkness of creation and comes from a Native Hawaiian creation poem called, called the Kumalipo. So you can call this black hole M87 or you can call it Poehi, um, but it, in any case, it's just an incredibly new way to look at black holes in the universe. Um, so let me tell you a little bit more about this black hole and black holes in general. Um, so this one, Poehi has 6.5 billion, that's six and a half billion times the mass of our own sun. So this is a hugely massive object, but it turns out it's actually not very big. So this is a wonderful XKCD comic. You can see here our sun um, and the orbit of Pluto. And it turns out this is just overlaid just as a, a graphic to help us understand the size scales here. Um, so it turns out that this six and a half billion times the mass of our sun is packed into a space that is not really that much bigger than our own solar system. So that's a lot of mass and a very small small volume. And it turns out that's actually one of my favorite definitions for what is a black hole, um, is a lot of mass in a very small volume. So it turns out you can turn almost anything into a black hole. Let's think about our Earth for a second. So our Earth has much less mass, so about uh, three millionths of the mass of the sun. So here's our Earth, here's its mass, a tiny fraction of the mass of the sun. Um, but even our Earth, if you could squish it down into something the size of a sugar cube, would itself become a black hole? So a black hole is just a whole lot of mass inside a very small state space, trapping a lot of photons in, inside of what we call the event horizon. So now that we can make images of the photons just outside that event horizon, we have an incredibly rich discovery space that we can explore. We can use a uh, very, very intricate GRMHD, you know, general relativistic magnetohydrodynamic simulations of black holes to understand what those photons are doing. And we can look at larger scales to understand how this black hole interacts with the environment. And so my group works a lot on that interaction. We actually use only the Event Horizon Telescope, but telescopes in space and across the globe observing at lots of different wavelengths. And, in, and we've managed to make a really amazing image of not only this black hole itself, but also the incredible jet that is flying away from this black hole. So here's this image I've been sharing with you. And then here's seven orders of magnitude marching away from that black hole to larger and larger and larger scales as you move out here and looking at this jet as it interacts with the intergalactic medium and tells us about how energy is exchanged from the black hole out into the galaxy itself. 
So we're also hoping to share with you some new um, discovery space about supermassive black holes from the Event Horizon Telescope, um, from the black hole that lives here in the Milky Way galaxy, Sagittarius A star. So stay tuned. We're hoping to bring you that information sometime very soon. So, but then there's a whole other era of discovery happening in black holes. Turns out we can also study small black holes, not the supermassive black holes, but ones that have something more like the mass of our sun, say 10 times the mass of our sun, or maybe 100 times the mass of our sun. So these small black holes are actually discovered via a totally different and also amazing method known as gravitational radiation. So gravitational radiation is where you have two objects or orbiting around one another in space, and they cause ripples in space-time. And we can detect those ripples in space-time using these amazing new instruments called LIGO, Virgo, and CAGRA. These are laser interferometry um, experiments, and you can see one of the people back here working on this incredible LIGO mirror system. So very, very cool instrumentation, which has brought us this entirely new population of black holes that we could not see before. So these are all discovered via gravitational radiation. I'll superpose the electro magnetic black holes that we know through their photons through light coming from outside the event horizon. These are black holes up here, and these are neutron stars down here. Sometimes they merge together to build black holes out of neutron stars. And indeed, my research group has been very fortunate to study a few of these mergers, in particular, the very first neutron star neutron star merger that's ever been detected via gravitational waves and also um, electromagnetic radiation light or photons. Um, and so this is what that merger looks like. These are a, This is a graphic from NASA of two neutron stars orbiting around one another, causing rip in space-time smashing into one another and in that collision creating a huge explosion that ejects all sorts of energy and in fact material into the interstellar space um, and creates platinum and gold and all sorts of elements that we need for life on earth and for all sorts of other endeavors. Um, so we're also hoping to build experiments like this that can detect gravitational waves that are even larger out in space and so stay tuned for that. That experiment is called LISA and it's coming soon um, to a science space near you, 2035-ish. Um, so I would be remiss not to tell you that my um, team is amazing at McGill. All of this work is done in collaboration with this incredible group of people, graduate students, postdocs, undergraduates at McGill University, and also in collaboration with the Event Horizon Telescope and the LIGO Virgo collaborations. So stay tuned. There's more great stuff coming. Um, and we're just really excited to be talking more and more about black holes and sharing them with all of you.